In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. As we gather this morning, I want to just say a few words of introduction. I'm Father Ed Shuttleworth from St. Charles Borromeo Parish in Chippewa Falls and St. Peter's Parish in Tilden. And assisting us today at Mass is Deacon uh, Tom Kinnock. We send a special word of greeting to all of those who are watching this Mass this morning on television. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us take a moment to call to mind our sins and ask for God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and peace, peace to, to his, his people, people on earth. earth. Lord God, God heavenly King, King, Almighty God, God and Father, Father, we worship you, we, we give, give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Father, your love for us surpasses all our hopes and desires. Forgive our failings, keep us in your peace, and lead us in the way of salvation. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it he built a watchtower and hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done? Why, when I looked for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now, I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge, give it to grazing, Break through its wall. Let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but see, bloodshed, for justice, but hark, the outcry. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. A vine from Egypt you transplanted, you drove away the nations and planted it. It put forth its foliage to the sea, its shoots as far as the river. The 
vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Why have you broken down its walls so that every passerby plucks its fruit? The poor from the forest lays it waste and the beasts of the field feed upon it. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man whom you yourself made strong. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Then we will no more withdraw from you Give us new life, and we will call upon your name. O Lord, God of hosts, restore us. If your face shine upon us, then we shall be saved. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. chosen you from the world, says the Lord, to go and bear fruit that will remain. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants. One they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again, he sent other servants more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. 
What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures, The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. Living as we do in the dairy state, talk of vineyards might seem a bit strange to us. We're more used to cornfields and pumpkin patches, especially at this time of year. But for the people of Israel, the vineyard was an important symbol. First of all, it meant settling down, coming and establishing a home. The ancient Hebrews had been a nomadic people, a wandering tribe. And so to plant anything, but especially to plant a vineyard, was to stop wandering, to tie oneself to a particular place. It was, quite literally, to put down roots, to make a long-term investment, if you will. And so when we hear in today's first reading that the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the people of Judah his cherished plant, We're being told that God is making an investment in his people. He has put down roots, so to speak, in Israel. In the Gospel of John, Jesus takes that image of a vine and reinterprets it slightly. During the Last Supper, he tells his disciples, I am the vine, and you are the branches. No longer is the Lord the vine dresser or even the owner. He is the very vine itself. In Jesus, God becomes one with us. He is the vine. We are the branches. In him, God has put down roots right here in this world, making an investment in us, not just for a season, but for all eternity. Now, of course, when you make any kind of investment, you expect some kind of return whether it's a vineyard or some financial investment, you want something back, fruit or interest or greater market value. The Lord wants some kind of return as well. But how often he ends up being disappointed. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done? Why, when I looked for a crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Wild grapes are sour grapes, scorn and ingratitude. How many souls are full of such scorn and ingratitude today? When we think of all that God has done for us, when we remember the price paid for us in Christ's own blood, how could we possibly remain indifferent? And yet sadly do, sadly many do, forgetting that we are but tenants caretakers and stewards of the world God has entrusted to us. In the gospel parable, Jesus says that the vineyard owner's son is murdered by the tenants. Of course, this refers to Jesus himself, who would suffer and die. And so from the cross, he asks that same question we hear in the first reading, what more was there for I to do that I had not done? What more? Could I have done for you? My brothers and sisters, we are here today and watching at home because we're not indifferent or ungrateful for what God has done for us. We're participating in this Mass precisely because we are thankful, because Christ has made a difference in our lives. And we offer the fruit of that difference. All our prayers and good works, our sufferings and sacrifices, All of this is the wine that we offer, the wine of peace and justice, the abundant wine of Cana, the wine that brings joy to human hearts and even to the heart 
of God. Let us now stand as we profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father. Through him all things were made. <clears throat> for us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, through this common prayer, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, not only for ourselves, but for all mankind. For those who do not yet believe, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For good weather and the fruits of the earth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have gone before us in faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs of our diocese, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, the permanent diaconate and religious life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions submitted by our viewers at home, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we come before you with faith and love to praise your goodness and to acknowledge our need. We ask you to hear the prayers we make in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of his church. Father, receive these gifts which our Lord Jesus Christ has asked us to offer in his memory. May our obedient service bring us to the fullness of your redemption. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. All things are of your making. All times and seasons obey your laws. But you chose to create us in your own image, setting us over the whole world in all its wonder. You made man the steward of creation to praise you day by day for the marvels of your wisdom and power through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
We praise you, Lord, with all the angels in their song of joy. holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. In memory of Jesus' death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread and this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love together with Benedict, our Pope, William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles, and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Together we pray for the coming of God's kingdom as Christ himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all fear and anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the, and the glory, glory are yours, now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you. And also with you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Let who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. Only say the word and I shall be healed. Let us pray. Almighty God, let the Eucharist we share fill us with your life. May the love of Christ which we celebrate here touch our lives and lead us to you. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Just want to once again assure all those who are watching us of our prayers uh, for you and hope that this Mass has been a source of uh, spiritual enrichment for you this morning. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. i
Christ there is no east or west, in him no south or north, but one great family bound by love throughout the world through. In him shall true hearts everywhere their high communion find. His service is the goal. 